So I think with biosimilar rituximab, we're still waiting to see what the indication is, right? And I think that's going to be a lot more um, of a pause. We know that there's a lot of discussion on the number of indications that these new therapies will have, especially in the broad range. For example, um, there may be patent protection issues. There's going to be a lot of discussion on what can be done for these therapies and the lymphoma and also, um, I'm sorry, non-Hodgkin lymphoma setting and also maybe ALL settings as well based on indication and treatment. So I think we're all a little bit concerned about what's going to happen with rituximab, the biosimilar coming out, the actual, what we're calling the actual skinny label, if you've ever heard that, sorry for the quotes, everybody. But the skinny label is actually going to be a smaller FDA indication list that the biosimilar rituximab may actually have come out. Again, at this point, I'm not aware of what's happening with FDA and also the current rituximab approval. But the key point is going to be what is FDA approved based on this discussion and also will payers this is going to be a very unique, if not pivotal, discussion. Will payers allow for off-label indications of the biosimilar as compared to the originator product? So what that means is imagine you only have two or three indications with rituximab, but the actual package, the FDA approval, the package insert with the FDA approval on there, actually for the originator product carries 10. If those eight are off-label, will payers allow for extrapolation to an off-label biosimilar product very different than what we had before with the rituximab off-label discussion, which is actually, you know, drugs which are not approved in that indication or rituximab not being approved in the indication, but again, studies being out there for efficacy. So we're actually leaning into a very unique direction of patent discussions, um, patent settlements, and also patent infringements, and how we're not there for some of those patent um, cliffs for this drug therapy. So we're really looking for some guidance in this area uh, with payers. I think payers need to actually voice some of this discussion early on so we can kind of guide ourselves what to do. Because if we don't, we may need to actually have a brand name drug therapy out there and also a biosimilar drug out there on the same shelf because payers may have different understandings of what that off-label discussion will be for implementation of biosimilars with Tuximab. So we're looking forward to it. But I think there needs to be a lot more discussion, upfront discussion, with payers at this point in time because it may make a huge difference on our practice sites depending on how much rituximab they use.